Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Johnson. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 29th of July. Rescue operations continue in cloudburst hit Kishtuwar in India, Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan neither responsible for Taliban nor are we their spokesperson, says PM Imran Khan. And pandemic hit sex workers in Nepal get help training for reintegration in society. And now for all the details. Rescue teams on Thursday continue to look out for survivors in Kishtawar district of India's Jammu and Kashmir, which was hit by flash floods following a cloudburst. The death toll was likely to rise as operations were underway. At least seven people were reportedly killed and over 20 were still missing till the last reports came in. Rescue teams on Thursday continued trawling through muddy debris in cloudburst hit Kishtwar district of India's Jammu and Kashmir in search of over a dozen missing persons. Kishtwar was hit by flash floods following a cloudburst early on Wednesday, which damaged houses, uprooted trees and destroyed property. At least seven bodies were recovered and 17 wounded were rescued from the debris till Wednesday evening. The shocked survivors were still trying to come to grips with the loss of their loved ones. The government of Jammu and Kashmir has announced an ex ratio of nearly $6,730 each for the next of kin of those who lost their lives in the tragic incident. हम मकानों में ही थे घरों में ही थे तो हमने जान बचाने की कोशिश की लेकिन कुछ जाने तो Meanwhile the water level in the Ganges river in Kanpur city of India's northern Uttar Pradesh state crossed the danger mark on Thursday due to monsoon rains Annual rainfall is essential in India as it supports two third of the 1.3 billion population living in rural areas who rely on farming but excessive rainfall causes problems like floods landslides and waterborne diseases. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan has said that his country cannot be held responsible for the actions of Taliban in the aftermath of US and its allies' ongoing withdrawal from Afghanistan. Interacting with a group of Afghan journalists in Islamabad, he said that his government is not a spokesperson for the militant group while reiterating that Islamabad wants only peace in Afghanistan. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan, while interacting with a group of Afghan journalists in Islamabad on Wednesday, said that his country is not responsible for the actions of the Taliban and neither is the group spokesperson. His remarks come a day after he said the Taliban are normal civilians and not some military outfits that his country can hunt down. In an interview with PBS News R aired Tuesday night, reiterating that Islamabad wants only peace in Afghanistan, Khan said Pakistan was ready and willing to do anything necessary for a peaceful settlement of the Afghan issues but ruled out using force against the Taliban. What the Taliban are doing or not doing is, is nothing to do with us. You know, you have to uh, speak to Taliban about what they're doing. We are not responsible. Uh, neither are we some spokespersons for Taliban. Khan said it was unfortunate that Pakistan was being blamed for the Afghan crisis, as it was Pakistan that convinced the Taliban to come to the negotiation table. Pakistan wields considerable influence with the Taliban and Afghanistan blames the insurgents have sanctuaries in Pakistan, whose main military-run intelligence service gives them support according to the US and Afghan officials. Pakistan, however, denies the allegation. More news from Pakistan. 
Pakistan government on Thursday set an August 31st deadline for all government employees, personnel of law enforcement agencies and sectors dealing with the public to get vaccinated. This comes as the country reported over 4,000 new COVID-19 cases for the second consecutive day. Pakistan's National Command and Operations Center on Thursday set an August 31 deadline for sectors dealing with the public, including government employees, teachers and personnel of the law enforcement agencies to get their staff vaccinated. This comes as earlier Pakistan Railways had also issued a notification directing that it will stop salaries of employees who refuse to inoculate themselves against the virus by August 31. Pakistan as of Thursday reported 4,497 new coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours, taking the infection tally to 1,020,324. Health officials have expressed concern over vaccine hesitancy amongst a majority of people. Last week, spokesperson of Sindh provincial government also warned that they had decided to write to concerned authorities to block the SIM cards of unvaccinated mobile phone users. अगर हुकूमत की रिट होती तो हुकूमत को वार्निंग्स देने की जरूरत नहीं थी कि आपकी सीमें ब्लॉक कर देंगे कि आप वो जो है लगवाएं आप जो है आपके बैंक अकाउंट बंद कर देंगे आप लगवाएं हुकूमत सबसे पहले तो ये साबित कर दे कि वो जो वैक्सीनेशन करवा रही है वो सारी दुनिया के लिए काबिल कबूल है Meanwhile, opposition Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Party Vice President Maryam Nawaz also tested positive for coronavirus on Wednesday. Maryam had recently led the party's election campaign for the July 25 polls in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, which health authorities had warned could prove to be a super-spreader event. And news from Afghanistan. UN Special Envoy for Afghanistan, Deborah Lyons, has said if there is no progress in the peace talks, the international community will isolate Taliban. This comes as the talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban in Doha have largely stalled, with the insurgent group showing little interest in negotiating while it is gaining on the battlefield. UN Secretary General Special Representative for Afghanistan Deborah Lyons on Wednesday said if there is no progress in the peace talks and instead human rights abuses and worse, the world will not work with the Taliban. While addressing the Joint Coordination and Monitoring Board or JCMB meeting in Kabul, Lyons said the world is watching closely how the Taliban is acting, especially towards civilian populations, women and minorities. Meanwhile, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani during the meeting stated there is no military solution to the ongoing conflict and the government believes in a political settlement. The United Nations earlier this week reported that civilian casualties had been surging with as many killed in May to June period as in the previous four months amid fighting between the Afghan government forces and the insurgent Taliban. Taliban insurgents have captured districts across Afghanistan and seized vital border crossings in recent weeks as the US-led international troops continued drawdown. The peace talks between the government and the Taliban in Doha have largely stalled, with the Taliban showing little interest in negotiating while they are gaining on the battlefield. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Heavy monsoon rains triggered landslides and flooding and has overwhelmed situation in refugee camps in southern Bangladesh, killing at least six Rohingya Muslims and injuring several others. The Bangladesh weather official said it expected heavy rains to continue for the next few days. Meanwhile, the UN Refugee Agency has expressed they were deeply saddened by the tragic deaths of the refugees, including children. Days of heavy rainfall which caused flooding and landslides has overwhelmed situation in a Rohingya refugee camp in southern Bangladesh. Footage showed submerged areas of Cox's Bazar where nearly one million Rohingya live in crowded camps after fleeing a military crackdown in neighbouring Myanmar in 2017. Residents were seen wading through the floodwaters on Wednesday. 
The Bangladesh weather official said it expected heavy rains to continue for the next few days. Rohingya refugees mostly live in shacks made of bamboo and plastic sheets that cling to steep. Bare hills and flooding has further worsened their living conditions. Meanwhile, UNHCR, the UN refugee agency, in a statement expressed they were deeply saddened by the tragic deaths of six Rohingya refugees, including children, were killed on Tuesday after heavy monsoon rains triggered landslide and flooding in the refugee camps. More than 12,000 refugees have been affected, while an estimated 2,500 shelters have been damaged or destroyed. Reports suggested. Bangladesh, a low-lying nation of about 165 million people, where monsoon rains arrive with a fury each year, is particularly vulnerable to climate change. Scientists say. With the pandemic-induced lockdown in Nepal, the life of commercial sex workers has become more miserable, rendering them unemployed and vulnerable. Maithi Nepal, an NGO founded by social activist Anuradha Koirala. to combat human sex trafficking is providing them assistance for integrating them into society many sex workers in nepal who found themselves without work during the covid-19 pandemic are receiving packets of ration and other assistance from an ngo for integrating them into society Maithi Nepal, a non-profit organization working to prevent human trafficking, has been distributing ration packages and some cash to the registered candidates. With pandemic-induced lockdown, the life of commercial sex workers has become more miserable, rendering them unemployed and vulnerable. मलाई यो काम सज सजी लाग्छा, सज लाग्छा कि ना वानी अब आई मी लगा आ रही हो इन्हें काम कर रही खाना पाइएन थे गाड़ो भर थी अलग एक वर्ष भो हमें बच्चा रामस पालन सके खाना दु दुख छेन दिजूले राशन सब दी रखा Apart from running Maithi Nepal dedicated to help victims of human trafficking and rehabilitate them, founder and social activist Anuradha Koirala since March 2020 has been extending help to commercial sex workers. Pushed into the profession to trade body for money, the majority of sex workers in Kathmandu want to reintegrate into society by transforming their lives through various means. Given them excavator training, we have given them. Now we are planning to give them. We've got one thousand, one hundred already, one hundred uh, uh, carts made, thela gadi. So where they can sell vegetables, clothes, anything they want. So we are trying to reintegrate them. It's a very happy ending that they want to leave this profession, you know, and come into the mainstream. As per records, Nepal has a total of 10,845 people directly in this work. Those engaged in this profession directly or indirectly are in the age group of 15 to 65 years. With World Health Organization's regulation to follow social and physical distancing measures, first issued on March 11, 2020, the sex industry had dipped down in the world, including Nepal. A special handicrafts and handloom exhibition was organized in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir recently to help the artisan community, which was hit hard due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The 15-day event also gave exposure to weavers and sellers. to showcase their products and skills taking forward the vocal for local campaign in india's union territory of jammu and kashmir the government along with the department of handicrafts organized an exhibition in shrinagar city recently to boost up the business of local artisans which was hit by covid-19 pandemic Various stalls related to the culture of Kashmir, including Kashmiri arts, handlooms, handicrafts, and traditional foods, were installed at the 15-day exhibition. Artisans showcased their products for marketing, including carpets, pashmina and kani shawls, paper mache, willow wicker, among other products that were the main attractions for buyers. Due to the successive COVID-19 lockdowns, the artisan community faced huge losses. because the sales of handicrafts or handloom products are always dependent on a good influx of tourists jaise ki covid ki wajah se sara band pada tha logo ke halat kharab hai ye bahut acha step hai ye kya handicraft walon ye group walon ne bahut hi acha kadam uthaya hai isse ye halat sudhrenge 
Kashmir is famous in the world for its unique handicrafts. Artisans demanded that such types of exhibitions should be continued in the future as well to boost the artisan community and uplift the handicraft sector. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.